Hello guys, welcome to round two. In this lesson, we're going to start learning about parameters and about return types for a function. So, until so far, we created a function that takes no parameters and then doesn't return anything. In this case, the return type is void and the parameters is whatever we put inside the parentheses. Now, why do we even have parameters or return types? Again, remember these functions are made for reusability or anything to make your life easier where you could be abstracted to something or you could change depending on the forms and so forth so on. So in the previous case, it was always the same, right? It was something that whenever you called it would send you back the same thing, which was the letter R, the letter E, the letter Z, etc., all the alphabets. In the case where we want to make it a bit more complex where it could alter and change forms, we need to pass it parameters. So in this case here, <clears throat> we want to change it a bit where we write messages. If you notice, my message is going to be always the same when I call it, and it's always going to write message. So to help us fix that problem, we created this string variable right, called message. And whenever I call my function write, the first parameter I pass, that would go inside my variable. So that variable, that box, that emptiness, would get replaced by whatever I send it, and then it's going to be used inside the function called write in this case. So if you notice, as we run it, you see the message going in there. So if I change the text inside there, it would change as well. Right? <clears throat> Again, the function name is up to you. You could make something super clear. Like here, we just wrote write rather than console.write line. We just say write. If you remember again, console.write line is also a function. Now let's make it a bit more complex. This time, I want to change this all to make it like a messaging app, like let's say an email thing. So an email, what do you require? Well, you have the body, the message, you have the person or the string, um, well, the, the from, I guess. So we're going to rename our function to make more sense. And we're also going to add a second parameter. If you notice, the parameter is going to be divided by this comma. And they go by the order you named it. So the first one says string name. Whatever you send to email, the first part will be going into that variable, into that box, waiting for you to be used. Right? So a better name in this case would be string, the sender. There's also going to be the receiver. And then there's going to be the message. Right? All three in this case was strings. We could make it into any variable we want, but we'll see. So if you notice here, the sender is going to be me. So I put Reza in quotes. Comma, right, going to the second variable. The receiver is going to be my class. I'm sending it to all my classes. And the message is going to be, hey, hello, my students, how you doing? So for so on. So, again, so Reza goes sender, class goes receiver, and the hello, my students, completely goes into message. Notice that the variable requirements, sorry, the parameters, if it's a string, you need to send it a string. Okay, if it's an integer, you need to send an integer at that location, right? We'll probably practice this more in class, but for now it's fine. So now we want to make the email part a bit more complex to show that we could make these, um, what do you say, outputs that are a bit different depending on the scenario. Notice that the scenario in the case of sending emails are always going to be the same thing, which is always going to have a field from, a field to, a field message, right? So rather than writing three, four, five lines every time I want to send an email, I would just call this function that does the whole email process for me. And if you notice, it's pretty much done. Let's run it, see how it goes. And notice that obviously an email, when you send an email, it does way more than this. We're just making it really simple. We're simplifying it for the fact that we're just trying to learn about functions. Okay, so that's great. So we got an email. If we want to, we could write a few more emails. Just call the function again and it would be fine. All right, now let's go and see what I'm doing here. One second. So let's go and create another function. This time we're going to talk about return types. Okay, so think of the situation we had last week. Every time we would write a message, we had to get back the user's answer, save it into a variable. And in the case of repeating this, there would be two lines. One would be console write to this screen, your question. And another console read 
which would get the answer. It's not too much, it's two simple lines, but let's make it a bit easier well, on us when we're, whenever we want to ask the user a question. So I named it Ask User. Again, it makes sense because that's what I'm doing. I'm passing it a question, right? The question is going to be filled with whatever I send to my function when I call it. And currently, if you notice, right beside Ask User, it says Void, right? There is no return type. Void goes into emptiness, like the space. So in this case, when I ask my question, I write the line to the question, I get an answer, right? The console.read line, it saves that answer into my variable called answer. Again, it's another box we create. We could create as much as we want, but we save the answer in there. However, the problem is when I call this function, ask user, it's not returning me that answer, right? Notice the return type is still void, so it's sending nothing. So I can't really make it equal uh, string from equals that. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense because it doesn't get back anything. I could run it, and we could fill up the whole thing. But after the function is done, it just disappears into the void, right? So to make the string from have a value inside of it after I call this function ask user, I need to make sure that my function ask user returns something to whoever called it. So again. Notice right now, uh, before I give you guys an example, that we replace void by string. This means inside somewhere in my function, I must have a statement saying return, and I return something that's a string. And one last thing before I forget, if you ever hit a return statement inside your function, it will end that function right away and not continue. Okay, You'll get some errors saying, hey, this code is unreachable type of stuff. For now, don't worry about it. Just know that your return should always be at the end of your function. Now, guys, think of an example. If we bring it back to the McDonald part, you go to McDonald, right? And the guy is asking you, hey, what do you want? Well, you say, well, I want a double cheese McMac burger with uh, cream cheese on top or something. And you give him also the money. Okay? So in this case, you're buying something from McDonald's. Let's call that the function, buying from McDonald's. Passing two parameters. One being your order, right? Let's say that's a string. And a second being your money, right? So the money being a double or something. Okay, so you say that make double cheeseburger, whatever, with the cream cheese on top. And the second parameter would be like $20, right? So McDonald's takes your whole thing that you pass to it the parameters you pass to it, creates your sandwich, takes your money, and sends you back the sandwich you ordered. Right? So from an order, you go and you have a sandwich. Okay? So this is the whole part of a function. Think of it as a, like a drive through You give them something, they give you back something. And the giving back is by the return, and the giving something is by the parameters. Okay? Now, if you notice, we keep asking questions every time. Ask user, ask user, ask user. In this, three, in this case, three things, from, to, and message. And when we filled it up, we clear the screen, and we're going to show the email to the specified user. Right? So this makes it easier because when we, as the programmer, read the function main, we're reading something legible, something that's written well. Right? String from equals ask the user, who are you? String to equals ask the user, who would you like to send this message to? Right? It's pretty clear. Rather than if we had all the code in there without having these little abstraction or these functionalities or these little ways of making it easier to read, it would have been taking us like five minutes to figure out what's going on. Obviously, the code here is a bit small, so it's not so bad, but eventually you'll be working on bigger problems, bigger projects. So you need these little abstracts. It makes your life easier. Or even better, think of it if you came back in three years and you checked your code, would it still make sense? All right? So here's Reza letting you off. See you guys this weekend or next time. Cheers.